Hello, everyone. Chris Martinson here. It is Saturday, uh, March 21st, and I'm taking the day off to recharge my batteries, maybe uh, do a last run to Home Depot so I can keep producing these daily video updates. But stick around. I've asked my fellow Peak Prosperity co-founder, Adam Taggart, to walk you through all of the insights in our super valuable new home lockdown survival report. It's been getting amazingly positive reviews and feedback since we launched it on Thursday. And if you haven't read it yet, you really should. Or, better yet, stay on and listen to Adam go through it right now. Adam, take it away. Hi, folks. As Chris just said in the intro, I'm Adam Taggart. I co-founded Peak Prosperity along with Chris. And uh, we run the site together. Um, he's the person who's been doing these daily updates. So this might be one of the first time that uh, many of you are actually seeing my face. Hi, nice to meet you guys. Um, anyways, uh, we've been hearing a lot from people over the past couple of days as uh, towns, cities, states, and, and now even countries are going into uh, mandatory lockdown mode where folks are being asked to stay at home uh, under a mandatory shelter in place order. Um, while we're all trying to figure out exactly what that means and if we're gonna be able to leave our houses and for how long, um, there's all sorts of questions that people have about, uh, well, now that I'm sort of under uh, home lockdown, uh, how do I get through this? Uh, what are the things that I need to know? Uh, what should I have on hand? Uh, what are gonna be the success strategies for making it through this undetermined period of time? Because we don't know if this is gonna last for a couple weeks or a month maybe even a couple of months. Um, so I uh, spent a fair amount of time uh, over the past couple of days writing what we believe to be a pretty comprehensive coronavirus home lockdown survival guide, which we published yesterday on peakprosperity.com. Um, what I'm gonna take time to do today is, um, we understand that a lot of people uh, here at YouTube have, have yet to actually come over to the peakprosperity.com website, which I highly recommend doing. Um, we also hear too that a lot of people um, prefer to get their content uh, either visually or uh, they can put on their headphones and, and go do something else uh, and listen uh, rather than having to plow through a long written report. So what I'm gonna do today is uh, something that we do from time to time at Peak Prosperity when we have a, a big important report is we'll, we'll uh, bring it to you here on uh, YouTube via video. So um, I'm actually gonna read through the report. We're gonna place a lot of visuals up here on the screen and uh, I'll probably do a, a fair amount of editorial as I go through this uh, since new data has come in since we've, we've written the report. But let's try this out and, and see how it goes. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to present the Coronavirus Home Lockdown Survival Guide to you. Lockdowns are rippling across the world this week with an accelerating number of cities, counties, and entire countries issuing mandatory shelter-in-place orders. Whether you saw this coming or not, and way too many didn't, here we all are, stuck at home for how long? We don't know yet. A few weeks, a month, two months? It all depends on the degree and intensity of the spread of the COVID-19 virus in our own communities. Local mileage will vary in the story. So how are you gonna go about making it through this prolonged period of house arrest without getting sick, going broke, or being driven crazy? As the folks who've been updating you daily since January on the unfolding coronavirus outbreak, here's our definitive home lockdown survival guide. We've written it to be a comprehensive collection of the resources you need to stay safe, sane, and solvent through the COVID-19 crisis. And it's a great tool for getting everyone in your household on the same page, print it out and then have them read it. I'm gonna talk more about the importance of that folks, but um, it's one thing for you to kind of get it and uh, appreciate what needs to be done here. It's a whole other thing to get the other people in your household on the same page, particularly if you've got kids um, and older, uh, you know, older generations in the house. So we know that's a big challenge and we, we talk about that uh, directly here. In this guide, we cover these key essentials, stocking your home for success, staying physically healthy, staying emotionally healthy, and staying financially solvent. Um, all right, so before we get into those, there's a section here that's just important to go through, uh, which we've titled, Getting On Board the Lockdown Train. Before we get to the tactical recommendations, mentally buying into the rationale for staying at home will be key to your overall success. Yes, lockdowns are extremely inconvenient at best. They require a real sacrifice. For many, like those losing their source of income during the shutdown, the sacrifice may be more than you were prepared to make. There's no way to sugarcoat the pain of the sacrifice, but understanding the larger context for it helps greatly with bearing its burden. We can argue later on whether our leaders could have taken smarter action earlier. They sure could have, in my opinion. But there's no doubt that what's needed most right now is social distancing on a massive scale. Here's the math explaining why. Don't worry, I'm gonna keep it really, really simple to understand. 
Here's the equation that epidemiologists use to calculate the exponential spread of a virus like COVID-19. Folks, it looks complicated, but don't worry. Hang with me here. Um, all right, in this equation, E is the average number of people an infected person comes into contact with each day. P is the probability of each person-to-person -person exposure resulting in an infection. And ND is the number of infected people on a given day. So, all right, um, really all you need to know about this equation is this. The only factor that we have direct control over at this point is the E. We can control how many person-to-person -person exposures happen. That's the entire goal of a lockdown, to drive that variable as close to zero as possible. That's, that's, that's why we're doing this, folks, worldwide, all these lockdowns. So that's each of our shared mission right now at this important moment in history, to do our part to minimize person-to-person -person contact. That's how we will collectively thwart this honey badger of a virus. And here's why this is so important. Yep, none of us wants to get sick, nor do we want our family members to get sick either. But COVID-19's greater danger to society is its ability to overwhelm our healthcare system, which it's currently doing in China, Italy, Iran, and projected to do in many other countries soon, including the United States. At current calculations, there are only a small fraction of the beds, respirators, medications, doctors, and nurses needed to care for the millions of seriously ill patients expected within the next 60 days. Drowning under that volume, not only can our health system not adequately care for those sick with the coronavirus, it won't be able to care for any and all other issues. Having a baby, break a leg, need cancer treatment, there may very well not be a doctor or nurse available to see you. And the last place you'll want to go is a hospital, as they'll all have become coronavirus uh, breeding grounds by that point. If you've not yet heard of the flatten the curve movement, which Chris has talked a fair amount in our past update videos, um, that's what these lockdowns are all about. They're all about trying to get that curve down. So I'm putting up a, a, a GIF here, an animation, um, that shows you the importance of these lockdowns, right? What they're trying to do is they're trying to get that huge peak down below, or at least as close as possible to the line of maximum capacity for our healthcare system. Uh, and even if we can't get it below that line, um, just getting it closer makes a huge, huge difference in terms of our health professionals' ability to adequately treat as many patients as they can. So that is what we're all trying to do here, folks. By slowing the spike in infections, lockdowns reduce the crushing wave of sick arriving at our hospitals and clinics and give our healthcare workers a fighting chance to keep things working. Just as World War II called on the masses to support the war effort by foregoing staples, donating time and funds, and planting victory gardens, this is our generation's great call to service. So keeping that context in mind, that your sacrifice is for the greater good of both your immediate family as well as for the global community, that's really going to help make home confinement feel less like a personal punishment from the universe. Okay, so now we're going into the tactical parts of the guide here, folks. First section is, is your home stocked for success? Now that you've got the right mindset in place, let's look at the best supplies and resources to have on hand during your lockdown. Of course, the best time to acquire these supplies was weeks ago when we issued our alert on January 23rd, I believe, to stock up back, uh, oh, yeah, back on January 23rd. <laughs> but don't despair if you're just getting started now. There's still opportunity to get your hands on many of the recommended items below, either via local sources, online delivery, or from generous folks in your neighborhood. Basically, folks, it's just time to get what you can and, and make the best of it. Um, you know, even if you're getting a late start here, hopefully you can get some of these. And if you can't, you know, just, just you know, make the best of it. Um, our advice is focus on the basics. Um, build a deep food pantry should access to the grocery store get cut off. Uh, personal protection equipment, otherwise known as PPE, and cleaning supplies uh, to keep your home safe from COVID-19 infection. Um, if you can get them still, medicine and first aid supplies, should you need to self-treat really for any health condition, not, not just getting sick from the virus, and backup emergency preparations. Um, this is just in case the utilities become unavailable for a prolonged period, which is not a high risk, but it's not a, a dismissible risk at this point either. Um, we've published numerous articles, podcasts, and videos on peakprosperity.com over the past two months covering these topics. Below are links to help you get up to speed fast if you don't already have sufficient preps in place. And I'm gonna be mentioning a lot of resources. Um, we'll be putting links here on the screen, uh, but some of them might be quite long. So um, along with the video, we're gonna have hyperlinks to all the links I'm talking about. So look in the description if you're watching this on YouTube and we're gonna have a whole list of all these hyperlinks. All right, food. At this stage, many grocery stores have had their shelves picked bare by panicked customers. 
Um, that's the bad news. The good news is that the lockdown should diminish the surge and give stores a chance to restock somewhat, especially on bulk staples. As you're able, get groceries, daily if you can, buying extra on each trip to increase your home food stores. Um, I'm actually doing that. I'm, I'm going out once a day uh, you know, with all my PPE on uh, to the store because it's the perishables that go first. And so I wanna keep that fresh supply coming in until it's not there anymore. And then I'm gonna start drawing down on all the, the food stores that I've been building up over the past couple of weeks. Um, your goal should be, yeah, and while you're there, buying extra on each trip to increase your home food stores. The goal should be to get at least two weeks of supply for everyone in your household, working your way up to a month's supply or more. For guidance on what to get, how much to get, how to store it, here are two excellent free resources. And almost every resource I'm gonna to mention to you folks is free. There are a couple that are uh, for Peak Prosperity's premium subscribers, but I'll, I'll mention that when, when we have them. Um, okay, so the first one is Peak Prosperity's Home Food Storage Wiki. Um, it's a fantastic guide about all things related to home storage, but particularly about how to build a deep pantry. Um, and then Peak Prosperity's Deep Pantry Mega Threads. As we've been covering the coronavirus, um, we've had a ton of people submit great content into our user forums, and we've had a, a wonderful Peak Prosperity user, a guy named D. Trammell, that's his username on Peak Prosperity. He has assembled all of these into organized mega threads. So if you're interested in learning about home uh, food storage and, and building a deep pantry, we've got a really huge thread that's just dedicated to that. Um, all right, so we'll be putting those links up, and I'll have them again down in the description section. Um, you may find that the stores soon start limiting the amount that you're allowed to buy of certain items. That's okay. Just buy what you can, when you can, being sure not to take an unfair share, i.e. don't be a hoarder. Um, I think Chris has talked about that in the past. Uh, at Peak Prosperity, we're all about preparation and then we're all about taking care of those that depend on you. But we're also all about making sure that you're keeping other people in mind and that you're not uh, stealing or, or, or taking too many and unfair share of supplies uh, when they're scarce and depriving other people uh, who need them just as badly. Okay, that's food. Um, personal protective equipment, sanitizers, cleaning supplies. Uh, PPE is what you wear to prevent from getting the COVID-19 virus particles from getting in your body. This is what you should wear at any time you need to leave your house for anywhere you suspect infected people could be. These include masks, gloves, eye protection, and gowns, coveralls. Sadly, supplies for most of these have long sold out. Um, even medical staff are experiencing a, an acute shortage. Um, similarly, many alcohol-based sanitizers are now hard to find too. Um, uh, bleach and other cleaning supplies are still available, uh, and you never know. You might be able to locate some of these more uh, out-of-stock items from local sources or from friends who bought extra and are willing to share with you. So it's definitely worth the effort to look and ask around. Um, good resources for what to stock up on are Peak Prosperity Sanitation and PPE Mega Thread. That's another one of those big forum threads I talked about. Um, Peak Prosperity's podcast with James Wesley Rawls uh, called Practical Coronavirus Preparation. I recorded this about 10 days ago with, with Jim Rawls. Uh, he's the guy who runs Survival Blog, which um, is a, a big prepper site, and they've been you know, planning for disasters like pandemics for, you know, well, James has been doing it for a couple of decades. So he's got a lot of really specific both recommendations and a lot of just sort of practical guidance on like, okay, here's, here's how you actually put on a mask. Here's how you actually disinfect your mail, that type of stuff. So listen to that if you haven't already. Um, and uh, the last one is um, the guide that Chris and I created, how we're personally preparing against the coronavirus. Uh, we wrote this about a month ago, but it's still just as germane today. That is one of the few that is you know, for our premium subscribers. But if you're interested, go to Peak Prosperity, sign up just for a month and you can get access to that report as well as everything that we've have that's that's for our, our premium subscribers um okay and real quick i just wanted to show you some of these things um just so you know what, what to look out for so uh again these are super hard to find these days but this is the n95 uh, style of mask it's got the little filter here um this is the type of mask you want to prevent uh from the coronavirus particles from from getting through the mask the n95 means it keeps out 95 plus percent of all particulates um so this is the type of mask you want to try to get if you can um, similarly, let's see here, um, you want eye protection and you want wrap around eye protection um, that creates a seal against your face. So, you know, uh, uh, regular glasses will protect you somewhat from droplets if somebody coughs or sneezes at you, but a lot of this is, is uh, suspected to be an aerosol, as you know. So ideally you want something that creates that, that seal right up there against your face. So try to get uh, goggles like these. I got these just at the hardware store. They're normally worn by painters. Um, so you can see if you can get those locally or, or uh, 
uh, you know, online still. Um, gloves, so you want uh, protective gloves. Uh, this is just sort of those latex um, uh, surgical gloves. These are a one and done. So if you're handling something that you think, you know, might be contaminated, you can use these and then get rid of them uh, in, into the, the trash or your burn bag. Um, you also might want to have gloves for reuse and these would be ones that you, you wash uh, heavily with soap and water and sanitizers uh, after you've used them. Uh, but try to get both if you can. Um, let's see, we're talking about PPE here. Uh, so masks, gloves, yeah. Uh, and then there are uh, you know, other types of things that you can buy like uh, you know, full-blown body gowns and things like that. Honestly, those are so, uh, been sold out for so long, I don't even have any myself. Um, okay, uh, the next topic is medicine and first aid. As mentioned above, you want to avoid going to the hospital as it fills up with serious coronavirus cases. Your doctor might not even be available to see you. So you want to prepare to self-treat for any non-life-threatening conditions. This includes setting up a sick room should anyone in your family contract the virus. Uh, keep in mind that 80% of cases, maybe even 85 of cases, are relatively mild. So in most cases, you want to treat somebody at home. Um, and help them through you know, the virus should they get it rather than bring them to the hospital, which at that point, you know, A, they might not be able to get attention and B, uh, the hospital you know, is probably gonna be at that point just teeming with uh, a whole bunch of sick people with coronavirus. Um, so you obviously wanna try to keep them out of that environment if you can. Um, so here's what you should strive to have in place, or here's our links to resources for what you should strive to have in place. Um, we have a, an ER doctor, username sandpuppy at peakprosperity.com. He's created sort of like a home care list everything from like um, uh, oxygen meters, they, they you know, very easily calculate your, your blood oxygen levels uh, to the types of medications that you should have on hand, that type of stuff. Um, and again, he's an ER doc. Um, there's the Internet Book of Critical Care, uh, their section on coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. Um, they've got a whole bunch of different uh, commentary there on different types of medications that are proving to be you know, helpful in treating at least the symptoms of, of coronavirus. Um, we also have a medicinals mega thread like the other ones I mentioned. Um, helpful too is the CDC guide for creating a sick room. Um, again, we'll have a link for that as well. Um, and then there's a book called Where There Is No Doctor. Um, this is something highly recommended by Jim Rawls, um, really for, for any kind of disaster, but certainly for this one. Um, and it basically just gives you a lot of kind of practical how to, uh, you know, every man sort of medical basic basic medical care that if you find yourself having to deal with medical issues and you're just not near a doctor i think this was initially written for people who were sort of like peace corps volunteers in, in african villages um you know this gives you a shot at, at trying to self-triage it um so again we'll have all those links um a couple of quick things uh you know you've heard that um uh Advil uh, has ibuprofen in it. Um, there's a lot of back and forth whether ibuprofen is actually a good thing to take or not if you're sick with the coronavirus. To be honest, I think that the debate on that is still raging. I would not get rid of this and I would use it uh, if you had nothing else. But um, you probably want to try uh, Tylenol, something like with acetaminophen um, versus ibuprofen. Um, so uh, if you can still stock up on that stuff, uh, please do. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, we talked about sanitation earlier, so you know if you can still get these, get get wipes like this for wiping down your your house. Uh, same thing with hand sanitizer. Anytime you're going outside, make sure if you touch. Well, anytime you come in, whether you touch something or not, use sanitizer if you can still get it. Um, if you can't, I think there's still pretty much universal availability of bleach. Um, you can create a bleach solution. Um, uh, we'll put up the. Uh, uh, you know, what, what, what the dilution of bleach to water is, but um, you can create your own sanit sanitation or sanitizer at home uh, for surfaces and whatnot with Clorox and a little bit goes an awfully long way. So you definitely should be picking one of these things up if you can. Um, and then get yourself, uh, if you don't already, a thermometer, obviously, a fever is kind of a key signal of the coronavirus. Um, you want a way to be able to, to detect that early. Uh, this one's an infrared thermometer. Um, you just put it near somebody's forehead. It takes uh, th the temperature for them a little bit easier, a little bit more protection from, um, you know, having to insert it in their mouth and, and uh, you know, potentially getting infected through bodily fluids. Um, something that Rawls talked about that I'll just sort of show you the 
cover before I got this after my interview with him. This is a nebulizer. Um, this is something that you would have for somebody who um, is sick with the virus. Uh, the virus attacks the lungs, makes it really hard to breathe. Um, this nebulizer is kind of like a mister. Um, it helps uh, with provide some breathing relief, but it also helps deliver medications through, uh, through the mist as well. Uh, they're very cheap. I don't think they're sold out yet. Um, you recommend looking into getting one of those if you can. Similarly, Rawls mentioned um, an oxygen concentrator, and these are the you know, things that you wear on your face, and um, uh, they increase the percent oxygen that you're getting into your body. Again, that's for somebody who's pretty sick with the virus that you're treating at home and is not getting enough oxygen. You know, maybe the, the oxygen meter is showing that their oxygen content's going down dangerously. Um, that would be great to have. Those are getting hard to find, um, but I wanted to mention it anyways. Um, lastly, um, you know, we talked about that you might not be able to get access to a doctor for any kind of health issue. So um, uh, if you can build your own home pharmacy, that's going to help you if you, you know, end up uh, not being able to, to actually see a doctor if, if, if you need medical treatment. So uh, I was actually down in Costa Rica not that long ago after the coronavirus outbreak broke out. And uh, down there, you actually, if you're a U.S. tourist, for whatever reason, you don't need a, a prescription to buy down there. Uh, and so I picked up a whole bunch of different types of antibiotics, uh, not because they're going to work against the coronavirus, but if you're sick with the coronavirus, then you're much more susceptible to getting pneumonia and other types of things uh, that can be treated by antibiotics. So if you have a way to, um, you know, if you live near a border, can go into Mexico, can go up to Canada, uh, or if you have physician friends who are willing to write you prescriptions um, with a clear admonishment that you're not going to take them without checking with uh, trained physician first to, to diagnose and, and tell you what you should be taking. But this really is an emergency backup of your own pharmacy in case the pharmacies are closed, run out of product, and the hospitals are overwhelmed. All right, let's move it on. Um, last uh, backup emergency readiness. Um, the odds of losing access to basic utilities like power and water and stuff like that while on lockdown is low, but it's not inconceivable. If the virus were to spread fast enough, there simply may be not enough workers who are well enough to keep critical services running. Also, a natural disaster could occur that disrupts things. Uh, just for example, when I was writing this yesterday, there was a 5.7 magnitude earthquake that happened in Salt Lake City. Um, so, you know, had that been a little bit more extreme, Salt Lake City would have you know, a whole bunch of different uh, emergencies to deal with, a health crisis, a financial crisis, and uh, a disaster relief crisis. So you just never know. So if you're well stocked uh, on all the items above that we've talked about here uh, and have the capacity to plan for this, um, we recommend checking out Peak Prosperity's Emergency Preparation Guide, which goes into great detail and, you know, all the things you want to have on hand from water filters to you know, additional emergency food storage to emergency lighting and first aid kits and, and all that stuff. Um, so that'll be, that'll be there too. Okay, so that's the first section. The second section of this guide is staying physically healthy. Uh, all right, now that you've gotten all the above in place, then home lockdown becomes a matter of what do I do with all of this time? We're going to start with staying physically healthy, as that's the primary goal here, to keep as many folks out of the hospital system as possible. Topic number one is hygiene. This is your first and best line of defense against the virus particles. First, don't get them on you. Second, don't get them in you. Uh, okay, so for all these things, social distancing, wash your hands often with soap or with hand sanitizer, but soap actually is, believe it or not, probably your best defense here. Uh, don't touch your face, mouth, nose, eyes. If you can't, shower at least daily. I like to shower when I come in from having been outside, like to the grocery store or whatnot. Uh, wash your clothes often. Um, if you've been outside and, and been near somebody with coronavirus, uh, throwing your clothes into the dryer and then the dish, uh, the, uh, sorry, into the washing machine and then the, the dryer actually is pretty uh, sufficient uh, disinfection process for them. Um, this is all basic advice, folks, but it's important because it works. Um, we then link here to the uh, World Health Organization's uh, COVID-19 recommended hygiene behavior for the public. We think the World Health Organization is not the best uh, source these days, but, but their hygiene recommendations are, are good ones. All right, uh, second topic, exercise and physical activity. Physical activity is the miracle pill. If we could bottle its benefits, every doctor would prescribe it. You now have time in your day for exercise. Make it part of your routine. It will keep you healthy, boost your immune system, improve your outlook, it's got endorphins, folks, and you'll enjoy it, especially if you do it as playful activity. So anything from going for a solo walk or run, and again, make it solo, 
Uh, if you have a yard, play with your family, frisbee, wiffle ball, uh, tag, I don't care, whatever gets you moving. Uh, and for those with less space, YouTube is full of home exercise routine videos. Um, if you're watching online, you've got access to it. Uh, and now many gyms such as Planet Fitness and yoga studios are posting a daily free home workout on their websites during the coronavirus lockdown. Topic three is sleep. Sleep is critical to a well-functioning immune system, and yet so many of us have terrible sleep hygiene. Put the screens away for at least an hour before bed. This means any screen, TVs, laptops, smartphones, get a full eight hours of sleep. Uh, this is really important, folks. It does make a huge difference, the actual hours of sleep you get, and you have the time. Uh, you're not commuting, you're not taking kids to school, so you don't have an excuse anymore. Uh, and don't eat close to bedtime. Uh, those three things uh, will get you 90% of the way there. Uh, we then link to sleepfoundation.org sleep hygiene guide, and it's worth quickly dialing through those things. Uh, topic number four, sun. Uh, often overlooked, exposure to sunlight is very important to our immune system, our overall health, and our emotional state. It's estimated that more than 40% of American adults are vitamin D deficient. Over the past two months, we've seen numerous medical studies like this one, which I linked to, we'll put the link down there, uh, indicating that uh, vitamin D helps prevent the kind of acute respiratory tract infections that COVID-19 victims are dying of. So it's important. Uh, sunlight is our best source of vitamin C. So get out in the sun. Be sure to get at least 15 to 30 minutes of midday sun exposure at least three times a week. And uh, during the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, 1919, doctors found that the patients they treated outdoors, like literally moved their beds out into the sunlight, um, in the sun and fresh air, recovered more quickly than those treated only indoors. So if it helped then, it may indeed help now. So get outside and get in the sun. Uh, last, uh, supplements. Uh, other key vitamins, especially C and A, are also being found to help your body's defenses against COVID-19, um, as well as other types of diseases. There's a wide range of immune system boosting supplements and herbs, many of them natural, that you can take to increase your odds of remaining uninfected or recovering more quickly. Uh, we also have a supplements mega thread, so I'm providing the link to that. Um, you've heard us talk a lot about the importance of uh, vitamin C, so uh, try to get yourself uh, a whole bunch of that if you can. Um, Chris has talked a lot about the effectiveness of elderberry. I know there's been a lot of debate recently about whether you should take elderberry uh, because of the cytokine storm risk. Um, I would say right now, Chris and I are not, not too worried about that, although we are monitoring the, uh, the research and we will let you know if we end up changing our minds. Um, if you can get yourself a multivitamin, certainly doesn't hurt to take it. Um, so, uh, you know, nothing wrong with it, using additional supplements to try to get your immune system extra boosted at this point in time. All right, so that's staying physically healthy. Now, the next section is all about emotional health. Um, as I've written about previously, and I linked to a, a actually pretty interesting article that if you've got the time, you, you should read it. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, when it comes to persevering through adversity, success is much more dependent on mental fortitude than physical. You need to have a clear picture of the payoff that will come from the sacrifice and suffering. In popular cultural parlance, this is referred to as understanding your why. If you guys are familiar with Simon Sinek, um, you know, he's all about this whole topic. Um, that's why the recommendations here began with emphasizing the huge importance that flattening the curve has to your family's welfare, uh, as well as that of your country and the global community. Um, once you really get it, it makes the hardships of home lockdown a lot more tolerable. Okay, first, have the talk. And while you may now get it, members of your family may not yet, especially the young and somewhat surprisingly the old. Kids and young adults, being who they are, tend to discount risk and ignore consequences. The popular perception is that COVID-19 is an old folks disease and makes them worry even less. Most of them get cabin fever quickly and just want to go out and hang with their friends. Uh, I'm sure if you've got kids at home, you, especially teens, I'm sure this is familiar territory to a lot of you. A surprising number of seniors are equally hard to influence and take the coronavirus seriously, especially if they're grandparents. Um, these folks tend to be set in their ways. They've survived a lot of other scares over the decades, so why should this one be any different? And they're damned if they're gonna be deprived of time with their grandkids. Um, but when it comes to keeping your house virus free, your defense is only as good as its weakest link. If your kids are socializing, they risk bringing COVID-19 back into the house when they return. The same is true when grandma insists on going to her bridge group. You'll be fighting a losing battle and likely getting angry and resentful in the process. If you hold yourself to a different, sorry, and you'll likely be getting angry and resentful in the process if you hold yourself to a different safety standards than the others living in or visiting your home, which is why you need to sit everyone down, 
uh, who is or will be in your home over the lockdown and have the talk. The goal is to guide everyone to mutual understanding and agreement. Do we all agree it's important to avoid infection? What level of safety standards will everyone embrace? A particularly good example of how to have this talk with older parents is presented here. And I link to an article uh, where the journalist talked about this exact, how she had this conversation with her folks and how it took kind of several bites at the apple, a number of different conversations, but finally got her older folks to really realize, A, what a threat it was to them, and B, how, um, you know, the family needed to take steps to protect everybody in the family, not even just the grandparents. Um, all right, so besides educating them on the scary stats of just how damaging and deadly this virus is on the elderly, one successful strategy is helping them to see your concerns for their safety as acts of love. It's all about repositioning how they're seeing it. Uh, so they see you coming from a place of love versus just a place of needless nagging, which you know you, you might be hearing about right now. Um, with teens, I'll be honest, it's, it's a challenge. Um, but these three tactics are helpful. One, connect their risk to their at-risk relatives. Um, yeah, if you get infected, you'll likely be, you know, feel better in a matter of days. But do you realize that if grandma or grandpa catches it from you, they could die? Right? That's one way to try to shift their thinking about it. Number two, uh, dispel the myth that all youth don't have to worry. Because there is, there's growing evidence that a larger percent of youth that, uh, than previously assumed get serious complications from COVID-19. This can result in a long-term decrease in lung capacity for those who quote unquote recover. Um, while it's not confirmed by the data yet, youth who vape may be at higher risk of permanent lung damage from the coronavirus. You know, we saw all the research that came out last year about the damage that uh, vaping was doing to lungs. Um, good uh, logic to at least expect that uh, somebody who's been a vapor uh, gets the coronavirus, they may not have an easy time with it. It may actually end up, uh, you know, they may be candidates for some of that long-term lung damage. And then three, uh, set a red line with older adults, sorry, older teens and adult children. So these are the ones that, you know, basically have access to the car and can be going back and forth out of the house. Um, you know, basically this is, hey, if you're intent on going out and socializing, that's your call, but you can't live here at home if you do. Home needs to be safe. That needs to be the, the kind of, you know, red line for you if, if, if that's truly how you feel in terms of how you want to run your house. Um, for example, those with college students like me, um, it may be preferable for all involved to send your child back to campus. That's if the dorms are still open. Um, and let them ride out the lockdown there. If they get sick, chances are high they're not going to need hospitalization and they've got friends there that can help them out and you can send support or maybe even drive down and see them if they're close enough. Um, but they're going to be happiest being around their friends and you're going to be relieved not having to worry about them breaching your virus barriers on a daily basis, which is you know, I think right now, a lot of parents of teens, that's the big, big challenge. All right, so once you've had the talk, uh, everyone then understands why the house rules are the way they are. Uh, they may not necessarily agree with them, um, but uh, the shared understanding greatly increases your odds that at least they're gonna be followed and respected, or at least better than if you hadn't had the talk. Um, okay, um, that's having the talk. The next section on emotional uh, resilience, emotional health is keeping the four horsemen at bay. Um, and the Four Horsemen is a, a reference to the work by John Gottman, who I'll talk about in just a sec. Um, when living in prolonged close proximity with others, life gets hard fast if your relationships aren't harmonious. John Gottman, renowned therapist of Blink fame, this was Malcolm Gladwell's book, Blink. Gottman was the guy he mentioned who could uh, spend something like uh, less than a minute with a couple and predict with 91 or 2% accuracy if they were going to be if they're gonna get divorced or, or be able to stay together. Um, and that's because he just had his 10,000 hours of, of spending time with couples and he knew what cues to look for, right? Um, so anyways, John Gottman of Blink fame um, has been able to prove that relationship harmony is at greatest danger from allowing any one of the following toxic behaviors to fester. These are the four horsemen. Criticism, defensiveness, stonewalling, and contempt. To understand what each of these are and to see examples in practice so you can be aware of how to avoid letting these creep into your own behavior, Click here to read Dealing with Disagreement in Relationships. That's an article that we wrote at Peak Prosperity. Um, it's a great article. Um, it talks about the Four Horsemen. It gives you um, a, some video clips of watching you know, real couples demonstrate these in action. I'm sure every one of us can you know, see ourselves in some of those things. But again, these Four Horsemen are the, are the, the behavior traits you really want to avoid in a relationship in general, but certainly when you're cooped up in the house and, and relying on other people under a stressful time. Um, so we'll provide the link to that, but definitely go uh, read that or watch those videos. Um, okay, look, uh, you put people in prolonged confinement under stressful conditions, 
and you're gonna have disagreements arise, it's only natural. So rather than letting that distract and divide you when it happens, prepare in advance and learn how to conduct the necessary repair work when conflict inevitably does occur. Our Gottman-based premium report, How to Manage Conflict and Build Relationships That Last, walks you through the mechanics of how to build up sufficient relationship capital to weather most disagreements and how to successfully repair and rebuild it when big disagreements arise. This report is one of the most valuable resources we have to offer folks living together in lockdown. It totally is. It's worth every penny of the $30 to subscribe. I totally agree with that. Um, uh, so this is, uh, again, one of the very few resources that's for Peak Prosperity uh, premium members. Again, I think this is uh, probably maybe one of the most valuable things in this guide that I can mention. Um, but you're gonna have disagreements with the folks you're living with, guys. Uh, it's just natural. Even if this thing only lasts two weeks, I'm pretty convinced it's gonna last longer than a month and conceivably could go to two months. Uh, you're gonna need how to avoid uh, damaging conflicts and, and conflicts are gonna happen. And when they do, you, what you really need to know how to do is how to do the repair. And that's what this guide, the second guide talks about. It goes through um, an entire framework of, okay, so we've had a disagreement. How do we get back onto the same page? How do we bridge the divide? How do we start talking to one another again? How do we you know, stop uh, feeling resentful? Um, all of the emotional survival skills for surviving exactly something like a prolonged lockdown. Um, can't talk, can't emphasize this enough. All right, um, next section, still under emotional health. Um, embrace purpose and meaning. Take a moment to appreciate that we're living through history right now. We totally are. For good or ill, this is a momentous time, one that may forever change your life. Our routines have been broken. That frees us to focus on areas we previously felt our busy lives had no time for. Sure, binge watch that Netflix series you've been craving to watch. Um, but beyond that, use this unasked for gift of time to explore ways to give your life more meaning. Practice mindfulness, and we link to a description of what that is um, and you know, tips and tricks for how to do it. Being present in the moment, grateful for the blessings that you do have, and more aware of the things in your life that you'd like to change. Uh, very important, um, you know, this is just kind of giving you proper context on life and, and uh, a way to uh, be in the moment more. Um, one of the things I talk with my kids an awful lot about because they complain about, oh my gosh, you know, what a huge sacrifice we're going through. This is the worst thing anybody's ever done. And I try to say, look, just be glad you're not being drafted to Vietnam, right? Or you're not going off to, you know, fight the, the great uh, Nazi evil during World War II. Um, you know, this is a big challenging time for our country, but there have been even bigger, more challenging times, and we need to keep all that in perspective. Um, visualize. Once things get back to normal, what improvements would you like to see in your life? Research, research shows that clarifying our goals makes it more likely, much more likely, that we'll actually achieve them. And with the extra time you have on lockdown, you might be able to use some of it to make strides towards the new you. We've got time. Put in that, you know, thought work that you don't have time and the regular busy life schedule that we, you know, we always get stuck in. Right now you've got the gift of time to actually make some proactive uh, changes in your life and that all starts with, with visualizing what they, you, you want them to be. Uh, and then journal. As mentioned, we're living through history. Capture your experiences and observations. Research shows that naming our emotions and acknowledging traumatic events has a positive impact on the psyche uh, and also your great grandchildren will be fascinated if they ever discover your journal. Um, so think about that, you're creating a family early. Um, next topic, constructive activity. Um, idle hands are the devil's tools, goes the old saying. So keep your household busy, create a routine, have dedicated times of the day when it's expected that each resident will be occupied in constructive activity. For adults that may be actual work, if you can work from home, or bill paying or home projects. For kids, it can be homeschooling, online learning, um, for school or just for personal development, uh, household chores or brain developing play. Um, and then on the flip side of that, um, free time and alone time. Uh, equally as important is allowing each family member to find a little solitude in their day. Whether it's to use the time to process their feelings, read a book, zombie out on Snapchat, or just get a break from the folks they're stuck inside with for God knows how long. Unstructured time alone is a huge catalyst for comfort and happiness, and I link off to some research about that. All right, last part under emotional capital here, or emotional resilience. Um, households have their stresses under the best of times. Living in open-ended confinement during one of history's greatest health crises is enough to break the tightest of family bonds. If conflict arises that you simply can't diffuse on your own, and it endangers the mental or physical health of anyone in your household, reach out to the experts. 
In today's age, most therapists have the ability to see clients online. I should know, I'm married to one. My wife is seeing clients right now as we're talking, um, remotely from our home office. Uh, and check with your employer, an increasing number of companies now offer free therapy hours as an employer health benefit. Uh, and since many therapists are under lockdown as well, they have both the time and the personal uh, experience to relate to the tensions that you're under right now. So having an impartial, trained professional walk you and your family through ways to find common ground and defuse conflict can be a literal lifesaver in trying, town, trying times right now. So um, I think it's all pretty straightforward. Uh, if you don't already know of a good therapist, you know, look up Yelp reviews in your area, talk to friends, whatever. Um, but uh, I guarantee you that most of those therapists are still working under home lockdown. And uh, with modern technologies like what I'm talking to you through, um, you can get a pretty... Um, you know, it, it's about 99% of the feel as if you were in the same room with them. All right, um, our last section here, we did uh, physical health, we did mental health, now we're gonna do uh, financial health. All right, so the last section here is staying financially solvent. Um, perhaps second only to dying or losing a family member to COVID-19 is the fear of losing your income and your savings due to it. And sadly, too many people already are. All right, let's talk first about losing your income. Uh, as of this writing, which was yesterday, uh, the 18th of March, 18% um, of U.S. households have already reported someone being laid off or having their hours reduced because of the coronas, coronavirus outbreak. That's amazing. That is one in five households almost, folks. Uh, the Economic Policy Institute estimates that at least 3 million jobs will be lost by summer. And that's just over the next couple of months, folks. Their, their estimates for the full year are much higher. Um, and this is just the start. Uh, the U.S. Treasury Secretary and member of the President's Coronavirus Task Force, Steven Mnuchin, uh, he was caught predicting that the nation's unemployment rate will jump from 3% to 20% as a result of the economic damage resulting from COVID-19. And interestingly, Mnuchin's tried to walk that back now, but um, I think that's just because um, the media just made such a huge issue of it because it's such an amazingly huge number. But I think he's right. I, I, I think that was an honest prediction on his part. Um, in fact, mine is, is you know, in similar areas. So sadly, I think we are going to see a tremendous amount of, of layoffs coming out of uh, the next couple of months. So um, if you're among those who have already lost their job or are concerned that you may soon be a casualty of layoffs by your employer, read our premium report, The Layoffs Survival Handbook. Um, I think this is the last um, resource I mentioned that's for premium users. Um, but um, uh, this is something that I just wrote, wrote relatively recently, just a couple of months ago. Um, it was very relevant when I wrote it. Um, it is way more relevant now. Um, but it provides detailed advice on the specific steps to take both before and after losing your job. Um, when we issued the report last year, we knew it was relevant then to millions of workers whose jobs were at risk from automation, outsourcing, poor management, corporate over-indebtedness, and a number of other risks but we had little inkling how relevant it would be to the millions more now losing their jobs from today's twin coronavirus slash market meltdown crises. Um, so it, it, it's a great resource, folks. Um, if you've already subscribed to get the other things that we mentioned, um, this comes free along with that. Um, but uh, if you're somebody who is at all worried about your job, it's very valuable information. Um, okay, next, losing your savings. Um, one of the crueler aspects of this coronavirus outbreak is that, as happens with exponential events, it has gotten far worse, far faster than most people could imagine, uh, and faster than they can mentally adjust to. Just as folks were starting to wrap their brains around the idea that the coronavirus was not just the flu, uh, suddenly all the schools are canceled, non-essential businesses are forced to close, and everybody's being placed on home lockdown. And if that wasn't head spinning enough, the markets have been in unprecedented freefall during that same period. And it's now official. This is the fastest stock market drop of this magnitude in history. It even beats out the 1929 crash in terms of the speed that we went from bull market high to a, an official bear market. Uh, so folks are being hit with a one-two gut punch of losing their way of life and losing 30 plus percent of their hard-earned savings at the same time. Is it over yet? Is it gonna fall much more? These are questions we're hearing daily from panicked investors, many of whom are, are contacting us from home, where they've got nothing but time to watch their portfolios bleed out further with each daily drop. Uh, and when I wrote this yesterday, the markets had closed limit down again, which means they had dropped the maximum amount that the exchanges would let them fall in a given day. So while no one has a crystal ball, we at Peak Prosperity have been warning for years about the risks of such a market breakdown. From our perspective, while there will likely be some relief rallies in the coming days and weeks, 
we think the structure of the market as well as the vigor of the global economy is being permanently impaired, meaning we won't be turning to the way things were before. Um, and that lower prices are highly likely over the rest of the year for reason, reasons well articulated in recent interviews that we did last week with renowned investors, John Hussman and Steen Jakobsen, um, which we've got links to both in this report and we'll have in the, the um, collection of links here. If you haven't watched those videos and you're interested in what's going on in the markets, uh, watch those. John and Steen are, uh, we were incredibly lucky to get them. They're, they're incredibly um, honestly famous, but also just in high demand analysts, and they were willing to drop what they were doing to talk to our audience. Okay, uh, the good news is that there's still time to reposition your portfolio for greater safety, even and especially if you're one of those whose savings have taken a beating this month. We discussed the many reasons why taking corrective action now is so important in uh, this short video uh, with uh, so we'll link to the short video, but a short video that we filmed with uh, New Harbor Financial, which is the financial advisor that Peak Prosperity officially endorses. Um, I, I interviewed them last week. Um, I actually just interviewed them this morning. So rather than the link that's in the, the um, current version, um, I'm going to replace it with the link that I just interviewed uh, from the interview I just did with them because that's the freshest amount of data. Um, the, all the insights are still the same, though. And what, what you need to know about New Harbor is um, – you know, we've been driving people to them for years, actually almost a decade, because they are um, the huge focuses on risk mitigation, right? So they, they've, like us, have been expecting a big financial crisis. So they've had their clients' uh, wealth in, in safe defensive positions. Um, as of the time I wrote this, which was yesterday, um, they've managed to protect their clients' accounts from virtually all of the market's recent 33% uh, drop. So um, as of uh, yesterday, uh, with the latest uh, data. The market was down, S&P was down 30%, the Dow was down 33%, New Harbor was down 1%. They were actually up last week and their little tiny drop this week was because of their um, some exposure to precious metals miners that had an awful, terrible, terrible week um, and New Harbor had hedged their position. So even though the metals had a horrible week, they only lost 1%. So you know, 1% versus 30 to 33%. Uh, they've done a phenomenal job of protecting wealth. Okay, watch the video, then talk with a professional financial advisor who understands the reasons why the market is breaking down, i.e. don't talk to a lazy buy and hold buffoon who was caught flat footed by this. Um, you really wanna to talk to somebody who saw this coming uh, and work with them to formulate a plan to protect your portfolio. Um, one day it's gonna be time to re redeploy your savings into attractively priced quality assets at lower prices, but that day is not here, we don't believe, nor do the folks from New Harbor. Um, focus now on getting to safety and keeping your powder safe and dry. Um, if you already work with a, such a professional, great. Hopefully they've already saved you a bundle by avoiding all the markets fall, but if you're having trouble finding a good one, um, consider scheduling a, a free consultation with the team at New Harbor. Um, you might have heard this say this before, but we've worked out a deal with New Harbor where you can talk to them totally for free. Um, there's no expectation to work for them, uh, work with them. You don't have to pay for the consultation. Uh, we just send them so much volume that they are willing to do this for us as a public service to peak prosperity readers. So uh, just a public service announcement for that. Um, okay, uh, switching from... Um, to the next and last section um, is information with action. Sorry, information without action is useless. And we're a minute from being done here, folks. So thanks for hanging with me for this long. Um, as we often emphasize here at peakprosperity.com, information without action is useless. This guide is only valuable if you put its recommendations to work. So print it out, circle at least three actions on it that you commit to taking within the next 24 hours. And then once you put those into motion, circle three new ones and just keep repeating that until you've made the progress that you think you need to make. Um, and as I said at the beginning of this, be sure to share this printout with the folks going through lockdown with you. It will help getting you all on the same page. Plus they may have some other good ideas to add to the thinking here, right? Um, you know, we, we, we like to think that we, this is pretty comprehensive, but we're open to the fact that somebody may have a better idea. And if they do, let us know and we'll update the online version of this with it. Um, all right, so to that point, this lockdown survival guide is intended to be a living document. As we have additional helpful recommendations, we'll add them to the live version. Um, so you know, any feedback you have, put them in the comment section here at YouTube or send them, uh, post them at peakprosperity.com. Good luck persevering through the coming week, folks. These are unprecedented and historic times, and we're going to get through them together, even if we're doing so squirreled away in our own homes. 
use peak prosperity to keep connected to the greater world and to the wonderfully smart and supportive global community that is the folks at peakprosperity.com. Follow Chris's daily video updates on our YouTube channel, which you all have been good at doing, to keep informed of the latest COVID-19 developments and lean on the tribe here should you ever need moral support in these trying times. Hang in there, this too shall pass. Thanks so much folks for watching. I know that was a lot of uh, material. Hopefully it was useful material for you. Um, if you found uh, that you think uh, other people that you know would benefit from this, feel free to share this video with them or share the link to the, the report. Um, again, I'll be posting all the um, links to the hyperlinks in the description to this video. And uh, again, folks, um, we're all in this together. We're all doing this from home lockdown. Um, we're gonna make it through this together. Um, stay strong, be safe. Put these recommendations into action in your life and we will see you at our next uh, daily update uh, video here on youtube and otherwise we'll see you back on sunday thanks for watching folks